Just east of Easton, on Maryland's eastern shore, is where you'll find Pop's Old Place. It's been a family farm since 1909. Inherited from her grandfather 20 years ago, Darlene Goringer, along with her husband Arthur Wilson, transformed produce fields into pasture land for their heritage breed livestock. Arthur and I raise Randall lineback cattle, Mulefoot pigs, the Katahdin sheep, and then we have laying hens out on pasture. And then we have honeybees, if that counts too. And by the time I caught up with Darlene, Arthur had left for his off-farm job, and she was ready to put me to work. So All what right. we'll do is I will get them some fresh water, and we'll just give them a couple scoops because they won't need much. Right. Perfect. If you want to put it right in that bucket where sure. they are, I'll dump the water. Hi, everybody. When mama wants to eat, everybody <laughs> lets mama eat. <laughs> she's, she's in charge. What kind of pigs are these? The hooves are different than what I'm used to seeing. Yeah, so this is a mule foot hog. Obviously, they're named for the fact that they don't have a cloven hoof. So there are very few of these in the country. It's one of the most rare breed of pigs there are. They have that black hair, a very thick hide, those long tails, which they're a little straight, and then they, they curl at the end. I like it, because I think, you know, them wagging the tail kind of gives me they're a good adorable. idea that yeah. they're happy and things are going well. But they're a really lovely hog. With the hogs fat and happy, we head to the front pasture to rotate the cattle. Again, a heritage breed. For Darlene, heritage breeds were a conscious choice. We just went down the rabbit hole of researching taste tests and heritage breeds. I knew I wanted to go with the heritage breeds, one, for the conservation purposes, but two, I really thought that they fit the farmstead environment a little better than some of the commodity bred breeds. What does it mean to be a heritage breed? They've been around for hundreds of years. They're true to their lineage. There's not been any introduction of other breeds. You know, no Angus, no Holstein, the, the common breeds that we're all aware of. And they would have been a homestead cow. They would have been used for milk, meat, and oxen. So multi-purpose was a, a good thing to have when you were a small homestead. They have very distinct qualities to them. I love the horns. They, I do too. They are so cool. So most of the females will have this leer-shaped horn, and the males, the horns go out a little straighter. Mickey Mouse ears, all of them have the black ears. They all have the white stripe. So they come from a genetic base of forage only, which I do think, I think it's a good thing to have if you're trying to do grass only. Darlene's livestock benefit from her commitment to regenerative farming. Vegetable fields that were once tilled over as a matter of course are now lush grassland. I think bringing animals back onto the land has a healing effect. Darlene has seen firsthand how her land has responded to the grazing livestock, and that healing effect on the soil is part and parcel to her farming philosophy. We have one life, and where we're planted in that life and I happen to be planted here. There's not unlimited resources. The soil is either gonna be depleted or built up. It doesn't usually stay the same, and it's important to me that we're constantly improving. It's no easy job being a farmer. Spending the day on Pop's old place gave me a taste of what life is like for Darlene 24 seven, and why she chose to raise livestock. I like the direct-to-market, direct-to-consumer approach with especially small acreage. And I can't bring grain in the house and eat it, but I can process beef and process pork, and it's something that's grown on our farm and ends up on the table. After all the animal tending, I got a chance to experience a special benefit to raising livestock. Okay, baby, I hear you, little. 
Come on, little lambs. Here we go, here we go. There you go. And we're gonna hold it upside down just like it would be on a mama's teat. And I usually just put it against, and then that way. Oop. She's like, she doesn't know what she's doing. Yeah, no, she knows you're different mm -hmm. and new. It's okay. We always joke that's the milk meter. When that tail's going, you know that there's <laughs> milk going in the belly. <laughs> Not surprisingly, Darlene's responsibility to our animals coincides with that of her land. I feel very responsible. I mean, I was entrusted with this land by my parents. So if I leave it a little better than I found it, and the next generation leaves it a little better, so hopefully down the road it'll be much better. It's the responsible thing to do. Did you know heritage livestock breeds are in fact rare breeds? They once roamed the farm pastures of our forefathers in great herds, but now their numbers are dwindling. In the last two decades, nearly 200 of these breeds have gone extinct worldwide. Thanks for watching Maryland Farm and Harvest. We hope you liked the video. Make sure to subscribe so you won't miss out on future videos. To learn more about our show and watch full episodes, check out mpt.org farm or just click the link in the description. Stream anytime, anywhere with the free PBS app.